For the moment, the jury's out. But Chandra remains convinced that this sort of interplanetary transfer of microbes is how life first originated on Earth. And Chandra is not alone. There are an increasing number of scientists who are happy to put their family ancestry down to aliens. Earth life is essentially alien life. It is not a life that was indigenous to the Earth by any means. And uh, if we evolve from that life, then I think we are the products of evolution from alien life. If the hypothesis is correct, then all of the life that we see today originated from material that was brought into our planet. And if it's coming from beyond the atmosphere, then it is extraterrestrial. That's not an unusual concept. That's the way in which life propagates on Earth. You have seeds, and these seeds are carried by the winds, and they start growing at other places when they find conditions are suitable. In that sense, we are all extraterrestrials. The ancestors uh, are pro probably outside Earth. So we have actually um, uh, emerged from some, uh, some, other, uh, some extraterrestrial um, uh, organism, actually. Hans Berger, the idea that life comes from space, only actually told how life started on Earth. It still doesn't address the big question, how did life itself start? But at least it starts giving us an answer to what's it like here on Earth, why is there life here on Earth, and it would suggest there's life elsewhere, which is something else a lot of people want to know one way or the other. Maybe we are Martians. Maybe life here on Earth came from Mars. Much of Chandra's work on panspermia has now been vindicated. So are we really descended from aliens? It could have come straight from a comic book. I think science fiction is always a very appealing thing for many of us to read, but sometimes science fiction turns into science fact. But the journey towards the truth is always a rewarding one, I think, and I, I saw this as a journey towards discovering a truth that was quite plain to me, and is becoming plainer and plainer to other people now, uh, after 30 odd years. If you want a experience of being humbled. Go look at the NASA Hubble deep space image that looked into the darkest, darkest little tiny segment of the sky. And what they saw back in that picture to me was the most devastating news of all for people who think we're important. What you saw were clusters of light that were not stars. They were galaxies. And there were thousands and thousands of galaxies in that little picture of the darkest part of the universe. If you think that there's not other life out there, think again. So what other strange ideas in science might just turn out to be true? Visit our website at bbc.co.uk slash horizon to let us know which phenomena we should put to the test. From telepathy to time travel, we'll find out if there's any fact behind the theory. And Horizon returns in the new year here on BBC Two. You did a show recently with, uh, and Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez were in the audience, is that right? Yeah, uh, I didn't know that they were there. I didn't know he knew my stuff. I didn't know Bieber personally. But um, it was in the Largo, which is a theater here. Yeah, it's a small I've done theater. that theater. It's not huge, it's pretty small. Yeah, and I had a bit in my act that sort of makes fun of Justin Bieber and some of these young pop stars. Basically, it's a song, and it mocks the way that those songs are written, which I think is... What, what the songs basically do is they they're love songs to girls and they describe the girls as vaguely as they possibly can so that every girl can think that that song's about them. So yeah. it's like, 
It's like I love how your fingerprints are different than everybody else's, and like I love how your eyes have that like bluish, brownish, greenish color, and your and like your torso is an arm on either side of it, or like whatever. Um, and did, then, he, did he? Did he? Pre, did you find out if they were mad or anything? Well, the thing is, it is that seems sort of harmless, but then it kind of gets a little darker and sort of accuses these these young pop artists of being part of this cycle where girls read magazines, feel terrible about themselves, because it says, you know, you should be skinnier, you should be prettier, they feel terrible. And then these uh, pop stars tell them that they're perfect and that they're beautiful in the songs, they buy the song. And then the pop stars on the cover of the magazines, so they buy a magazine again, so they're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> And it's sort of just like this vicious cycle. And I basically like, it's, uh, sort of imply that he's working for Satan or whatever. Um, <laughs> Um, little shout out to Justin, how <laughs> Satan, yeah. Um, it's great. But then, I, when I found out that he came to the show, I just sort of felt bad, because it's like this poor 18-year-old kid, like, wanted to get out for the night, like, with his girlfriend. They, they snuck into the, th the theater, like, through the back when the house lights were down. He, like, grabbed her hand, looked into her eyes, and then I just tooled on him for 10 minutes. <laughs> so, if, Bieber, if you're watching, I'm... I don't know why I assume he's in the audience. Uh, Bieber, <laughs> if you're watching, I'm... Uh, Sorry, it wasn't personal. It he just... was in the crowd just to see a show where no one mentioned him, and uh, <laughs> yeah. then you ruined it. Now he's skulking out. Um, yeah. Zach Stone is going to be famous. Premieres tomorrow night at 10:30 on MTV. Yeah, if so. you like the clip, watch it. If you didn't like the clip, uh, it doesn't it... get better. So, <laughs> <laughs> a rare moment of honesty. <laughs>
the use of alternating current, radio, fluorescent lighting, remote control, and robotics, a total of 700 patents, are all attributable to this one man. On Thursday, January the 7th, 1943, at approximately 10.30 p.m., with the world engulfed in a struggle against the dark forces of the Nazi war machine, Nikola Tesla breathes his last, dying alone in a small room at the Hotel New Yorker. Outside, the city is alive with his legacy, glistening with the electricity from Tesla's fully realized vision of a world powered by alternating current. He was incredibly aware of consequences of his scientific inventions and their impact on the total development of mankind. Tesla is buried in relative obscurity, a fallen giant of invention whose discoveries remain the foundation for some of civilization's most important scientific advancements. He is one of the greatest geniuses of the 19th century. Edison was one level of, 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 of science, but Tesla was many levels higher. He was a lonely character, researching independently, outside mainstream science. He must have appeared to the so-called normal world like a complete eccentric. He gave our country a tremendous uh, package of technology, uh, applications and wonders and, and our lives, uh, all our lives are collectively much better because of his work. Why has this great man been so neglected by his fellow scientists and the public? Perhaps the answers lie more in the works never realized by Tesla than in his publicly acknowledged achievements. Nikola Tesla was born at the stroke of midnight in 1856 in the midst of a dazzling electrical storm. As a young man, his greatest aspiration was to harness the power of Niagara Falls. He achieved that dream and in so doing popularized alternating current. Now, already a half century after his death, a mystery surrounds Tesla. His contributions, which were great in many, have descended into obscurity. Why? Nikola Tesla was a humanitarian, a U.S. patriot, yes, an unbridled genius, though he has most often been personified as the quintessential mad scientist. Perhaps his only real misdeed was being born ahead of his time. Tesla, a Serb, grew up in a small village in Croatia, the son of a strict clergyman and a brilliant inventive mother. With a photographic memory and the ability to learn six languages by the age of 18, Tesla soon assumes his path in life as a gifted inventor. He has an uncanny ability to visualize his inventions, to assemble, test, and disassemble them to exacting dimensions, all in his mind, either while awake or in his dreams. From the time he was an early child, Tesla had the capability to visualize something so intensely and so vividly that he simply couldn't tell the difference between that and a real object. In 1884, Nikola Tesla emigrates to the United States. Virtually penniless, he presents himself to Thomas Edison and is hired immediately. Okay, Tesla, consider yourself introduced. But when Tesla describes to Edison his intricate plans for alternating current and polyphase motor system, far more efficient than Edison's direct current system, Edison recognizes Tesla as a potentially dangerous competitor. Edison just didn't want anybody to get ahead of him, even if he had a better system. And this is the way it is uh, when you get uh, aggressive people working. They, they, they will destroy each other. A prize is offered to anyone who can harness and transmit energy from Niagara Falls to Buffalo, New York. Edison does everything in his power to discredit alternating current and Tesla. Alternating current is a danger to human life. Start the generator. You have just seen alternating currents in action. Despite Edison's opposition, Tesla's AC polyphase system is adopted. And in May of 1888, George Westinghouse hears about this remarkable and buys the alternating current patents. 
1897, both Tesla and alternating current become a household name throughout the world. He realized completely what would happen with the implementation of alternating current and electrification of the whole planet. That it would bring tremendous change in human life, in information in general, even in the mental state of human beings.